This video is sponsored by the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Game course. In the course I show you how to make an online open world survival game from scratch in C++ and host it on Steam so you can play it with other people. I show you how to do everything from installing the tools to creating an inventory system, equipable clothing, weapons and vehicles, and tons of other stuff. The course comes with over $1000 in assets alone and you can get it now on my Patreon for $25. You do get lifetime access even if you cancel. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below and enjoy the video. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a battle royale game. We are doing a very basic battle royale game. So you have a gun, it shoots these grenade thingies and if you hit someone, they're going to die. You can see that the alive players is on the screen and if you kill someone and you're the last person left alive, then you win the game. And it says your username. Because I'm playing offline, it says my desktop name, but if you're playing on Steam, it's going to say your Steam username. Cool, so this is a really, really basic Battle Royale game. I know there's not parachuting, there's not a bunch of like crazy stuff like Fortnite has. The point is, I just want to explain as fast as possible um, how to make a Battle Royale game, and we're going to use some really important classes. So not only do you get to make a very nice little Battle Royale template game, um, but you'll also figure out how the game mode works, the game state works, player controller, player state. Some of these really important Unreal classes that are usually really boring to explain, but by making a game, we can hopefully make it a bit more fun. So, let's begin. Okay, opening the Unreal Project Browser, we're running uh, Unreal Engine 4.23 in this video. You're going to go to New Project, C++, we're going to use a first-person template project, and we'll call it BR for Battle Royale. Go ahead and click on Create Project, and we'll begin. Next up in the Epic Games Launcher, you want to click on Unreal Engine, go to Marketplace, and search for Animation Starter Pack, and then go ahead and click on Animation Starter Pack. This is a free pack, and it's just going to have some animations that we'll use, and then click on Add to Project, with this button here, and then go ahead and select the BR Project when it prompts you to add to the project. Okay, so I've opened the project up and we have everything. You should have the Anim starter pack added to the project now as well. And we're going to sort of talk about how we'll build out this game. Let's go ahead and change this text to, I'm going to say, Battle Royale Templates. Okay, so I'm going to click on C++ Classes and we'll talk about some of the classes we're going to add. We're going to start off with the game mode. So the game mode is a uh, class that exists only on the server and its job is to enforce rules about the game. Um, for example, you know, what player should we have? Where does a respawn happen? How do we respawn the player? Um, can you kill players? So, you know, things like that, the rules of the game. The next class that I want to talk about is the game state. So if you add a new class and go down to where it says game state base, um, so the game state base is basically a class that manages the state of the game. So the game mode does the rules of the game, as you can see, uh, rules, scoring, stuff like that. The game state is more, what is the current state of the game, right? So like, um, what round are we in? Uh, you know, how much time is there till the game ends? Things like that. The current state of the game. The game mode's not going to store the state of the game. It's more just going to store like rules, what happens when a player dies, things like that. Cool. So let's go ahead and add a game state base. We're going to go next and I'm going to call this BR game state. Not going to have base on the end there, we'll just say BR game state and then go ahead and click on create class. The next thing that we're going to add is a player controller. So a player controller is the thing that controls whatever pawn you have. So the pawn is this guy here, the character. We can see him in the level. The player controller is kind of the invisible thing that's actually controlling that pawn. Uh, and so we're going to go to new C++ class, we're going to search for a player controller and we just want a custom player controller. We're going to call this BR player controller and then go ahead and create that. The final class that we're going to add is something called the player state. So um, we talked about the game state tracking the current state of the game. The player state tracks pretty much just the current state of the player. So it's going to be responsible for things like holding your username, um, holding your ping, maybe keeping track of how many kills you have. Um, whereas the game state might keep track of like how many kills each team has, you know? So player state is more of a personal thing and it gets assigned to each player that joins the game. So we're going to add a custom player state as well. We'll just call this BR player state and then click on create class. All right, click the drop down here, select say three players. We're going to use a dedicated server because that's how I would typically deploy a game. And then we're going to run a new editor window. You can see that I can't see anyone else that's in the game and that's because 
there is just these arms and the arms are set up so only you can see them that's why we have this animation starter pack so what i'm going to do is go to first person cpp blueprints open up the character and we'll make it so you can actually see other people that are in the game to do that we're going to go to the mesh click on mesh we're going to select sk mannequin you will need to rotate this 90 degrees and move it down like so go ahead and select the animation blueprint as hero tpp and now you have a, uh, a player that other people can see. You're going to go to owner and select owner no see because you don't want to be able to see this mesh yourself. Um, and then we're going to add a skeletal mesh to that mesh. We're going to say gun mesh. Just as a nice touch, we want to be able to see other people's guns as well. So we're just going to say gun. And then for the parent socket, we're going to parent it to the hand R. And then we'll just sort of like rotate this guy. And it looks good to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now, um, oh, you will also need to do owner no C on the gun. Compile, save. I'm going to go ahead and delete this guy from the map. I don't want him there. And so if we play the game, I can see other people. They have guns and everything seems to work. So by default in this project, if I shoot someone, um... It does pretty much nothing. If you shoot these cubes, the ball will disappear and do some physics stuff. We're going to actually change this so that shooting a player will actually kill the player, um, give you some score and stuff like that. So to do that, we need to jump into the C++ code that we added. So I'm going to go over to Visual Studio. I'll see you guys there. Okay, so in Visual Studio, um, in the Solution Explorer, you can see here are the classes that we've added. I'm going to open the game mode because the game mode is the rules of the game. It kind of makes sense to me that we would start in the game mode. And so um, let's think about what our Battle Royale game needs. The first thing that it needs is it needs to know when um, someone dies, right? Because when someone dies, that's how we know if you've won or not. If someone dies and then there's only one person left, then someone's won the game. So let's add a function here called player died. And when someone dies, we're going to have a parameter. So the person that died and the person that got the kill. The next function is what happens when someone wins the game. So again, we're defining the rules of the game. Um, what do we want to do when we find a winner? So we're going to have this function called winner found and it takes the person that won the game. Finally, how do we know that you are the winner of the game? How do we know you're the last person that's alive in the game? To do that, we're going to keep track of everyone who's alive in the game. So we just add a array of player controllers basically everyone who's alive. And then when you die, we're going to remove you from this list. And then when there's only one player left in this list, that means that you've won the game. You probably transient just means don't save this to disk. And that's because at the start of each game, this is going to be cleared out and there's no point saving that to disk. Lastly, we're going to add a uh, function here called post login. This is a function that is called by Unreal Engine when someone joins the game, and we're going to use that to populate our array of all the players that are alive in the game. So I'm using Visual Assist, so I'm able to just go to create implementation. If you're not using Visual Assist, just click on quick actions and then click on create definition, and it'll just implement the function for you. So I'm just going to go through here and just implement all of these functions quite straightforward. And so your C++ file should look like that, CPP. We'll start by filling out the post login function. This simply just calls the super post login, so Unreal can do whatever it needs to do. And then we just add the new player to our alive players. We're also going to need to include a bunch of header files here. I'm just going to include these ahead of time. Uh, we need to access the controller, the player state, and the game state. So you just want to include those at the top of your header file there. So we're going to take a break from our game mode, and we're going to open up the BR game state. So we said that the game state kind of tracks the current state of the game. In Battle Royale, there's really only one thing that I want to track, and that's who won the game. Because that's kind of a state-based thing. Is there a winner? No. Someone just won? Okay, now there's a winner. So the state of the game has changed. So I think storing the winner in the game state makes sense. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have something called the winner. I'm just going to add this here. And we're going to add some markup to it. Don't be scared. Nothing too crazy. Um, so we're marking this as a U property. We are replicating this value so that everyone in the game knows who the winner is. Uh, transient, don't save it to disk. We want blueprints to be able to read it because we're going to do some UI stuff as well. So just add what I have here. Um, and then we have an onrep function as well. This is a function that is called when the winner changes. So 
um, when someone wins the game, we can use this function to put some UI on the screen saying who the winner was. To do replication in Unreal Engine, you need to actually implement this function here called get lifetime replicated props. It's a slightly scary sounding function, but it's just a function that tells Unreal Engine that we want to actually replicate this value to everyone in the game. If we didn't do that, then no one would know who won the game. So we need to implement that function. And while we're at it, we'll implement the onrep winner function as well. Inside of get lifetime replicated props, we're just going to tell Unreal Engine to do whatever it needs to do, and then we're going to actually replicate the winner using do rep lifetime. You'll also need to include the header file for the Unreal Networking stuff, so net slash Unreal Network. Finally, we're going to use a delegate. This is a way to tell people about something. So you have like a delegate, people can subscribe to the delegate, and then when it gets broadcast, you can do something. We're just using this so that we can put some UI on the screen, because I want there to be like some nice UI. Um, and then we can just declare the delegate down here using the following syntax. Uh, blueprint assignable is basically saying that blueprints can actually bind to this delegate, and that's perfect because my UI is going to be in blueprints. So when a player dies, what we want to do is we want to remove them from the list of alive players. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the player that was killed. We're going to make sure that they are valid by uh, doing it if killed. We're then going to get their player controller and we're going to remove them from their list of alive players. So we just do alive players, remove single, and we're just getting the person that died. We're getting their controller and removing it from the list. So we've just removed the person that died from the list of alive players. And if there is only one person left in the alive players, that actually means that someone has won the game. The way that we check that is we just say if alive players dot number equals one, then there's only one player left alive. And we're also going to do a little valid check here just to make sure that we don't get any crashes. And so at this point, we can call our winner found function. We actually found the winner of the game. Uh, to get the winner's player state, you simply just do alive players at zero and just grab the player state. And we're also going to cast it to our custom player state here. So if you remember, the game state uh, actually tracks the person that won the game. So the game mode, what it's going to do is when we find a winner, it's going to grab the game state and then it's simply just going to say game state winner equals whoever won the game, right? The last person that was alive has won the game. So grab the game state, tell the game state who won the game. At this point, the game state needs to tell everyone in the game to put uh, the, the game over UI on the screen. And that's uh, done using this delegate here. So what we're going to do is we'll just go to our onrep function and we're going to say on winner found dot broadcast. So now everyone in the game is going to know that we have found a winner. Now currently when you shoot a bullet, no one else in the game actually sees that you shoot a bullet. So the bullets are not networked. To make them networked, we're going to go to the BR projectile uh, class here. We are simply going to add set replicates and set replicate movement to true. Then above the on fire function, we're going to add one called server on fire. So this is just the server's version of the on fire event. I'm going to use visual assist to implement this. Uh, but if you're not using using Visual Assist, you will just need to type that out manually. Make sure to put the underscore implementation on the end as well. So as you can see here, when you click the left mouse button, that's actually going to fire a bullet out of our gun. What we need to do is actually tell the server to fire the bullet instead, and that way it can replicate to the people that are in the game. So we're going to say that if we do not have authority, that means we're a client and not the server. So if we are a client, we're going to do the animation and the sound and stuff like that. And then we're going to tell the server to actually fire the gun. And then the server is going to do the actual spawning part. So this part down here, this is to be handled by the server. And if the server spawns the bullet in, then everyone in the game is able to see it. That's how the replication system works. I'm also going to come down to the actor spawn params and just say actor spawn params owner equals this. So set our character as the owner. This is a little bit important later on. Also inside of server on fire, you need to say to the server that it should call the on fire function. So basically when you shoot, when you click the left mouse button, we're going to play some audio, do some animation stuff, and then tell the server to call this same function. But when the server comes in, it's actually going to spawn the projectile in. And because it's replicated, everyone in the game gets to see the projectile get spawned in. 
So the last step, how do we make the characters die? Um, when I say die, basically what I do is I simulate physics so that the character ragdolls and then I despawn them after 10 seconds. So a very simple way to do this is we're going to add a couple of functions here, very similar to what we had just before. So I'm going to add a public section here and we're going to have a replicated variable killer and then we're going to have an on rep killer so this is so everyone in the game knows that we were killed that way everyone in the game can see our character actually ragdoll right so we're going to implement this function and because we're doing some replication stuff we will need to come up here and do the uh, get lifetime replicated props thing so just go ahead and type out that big long function there <laughs> and then create implementation we're going to call the super function and we're just going to do the exact same thing we just did before which is to tell the killer to replicate and you will need to include net slash unreal network because the ui is done in blueprints i'm going to make a blueprint implementable event here uh, called show death screen. So basically when you die, this is just a function, but it doesn't get implemented in C++. It gets implemented in blueprints so that we can do the UI stuff. So don't worry about implementing this function. You do not need to do that. So basically when a player dies inside of onrep killer, we're going to say that if it is us that has died, then we want to show the death screen. We don't want to show the death screen if someone else dies. So that's what this is locally controlled check does. Um, we're then going to turn off our collision. We're going to cause our character to ragdoll by simulating physics on it and then we're going to set our lifespan to 10 seconds and that basically means that after 10 seconds passes our character will be uh, destroyed and removed from the level. So if we go into BR projectile currently when it hits something it's just going to do some physics stuff we're actually going to get rid of this and we're going to say that we want to check if we've hit someone with the bullet. If we have then we need to grab our game mode and tell the game mode that someone has died and then finally we actually set the player's killer and that's going to cause the player to fall to the ground and ragdoll and do all that good stuff. At the top of this file you will have to add a couple of header files there, the character and the game mode. Okay to finish this video off we just have to do a little bit of UI stuff and then this should like pretty much be good to go. It's actually very straightforward to do. Um, by default though Unreal Engine is not using our new classes that we made so we actually need to set these up. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on the game mode. We're going to create a blueprint class. I'll just put it inside of the blueprints folder and we're going to call this BP underscore BR game mode. Inside of your new blueprint that you've made, just go ahead and select all of those custom classes that we just made. So BR player controller, BR player state, uh, for the game state, BR game state and so on. I'm just going to compile and save. So to use the game mode that we just made, we're going to go to world settings, game mode override, and we'll just go ahead and click on that there. Um, if you want to set the game mode in a more official way for your actual project, you go to maps and modes, and then under uh, the default game mode, you can actually select your game mode there as well. You should now be able to uh, simulate the game. I like to do three players, dedicated server. I'm going to run in a new editor window. And when I shoot someone, you can see that they actually ragdoll. To do that cool exploding stuff that I did um, in the start of the video, just open up first person projectile, click on the collision comp, go to where it says on component hit, and I'm just doing the, um, the explosion and stuff in blueprints because it's a lot easier. So we're going to spawn the explosion particle system, um, and then just grab the hit, break that apart, plug in the impact point to the location, and we're also going to destroy the uh the projectile as well when it hits something so now when you shoot you can see that your uh, bullets actually explode okay so let's do the ui stuff so when the game's over tell the players that the game's over etc we're going to open up the first person character here and at the begin play event if you just type in begin play you can see that's how you get the event um, and so what you want to do is when we start playing the game we only want to do this for us so we'll just do is locally controlled because if the game ends for someone else we don't want to put three game over screens up or 50 game over screens up we just want to do one for us so what we're going to do is we're going to get the game state we're going to cast it to the br game state that we just created in c++ before 
And this is what I was talking about with that winner found thing. If you drag out and do winner found, you can actually click assign on winner found. And this will make a new event. We're just going to call this on winner found. So now this event is going to get called when a winner is found. And this is where we're going to do the UI stuff. But just to make sure this works, I'm going to type print string and just say someone won. And then we'll compile and save. Jump into the game. Try killing the other two players. And you can see that it says someone won at the top of the screen. So everything is hooked up and appears to be working. The last thing to do is just to get the UI going. We're going to make the world's most boring looking UI. I'm going to make a widget blueprint here. We'll call this widget blueprint underscore game over. And I am not exaggerating when I say this is the world's worst UI. We're just going to take a image. We'll just drag that in. I'm just going to drag that over everything like so. We're going to make the color, I'm going to go with like a dark gray color. And then we'll just drag some text on saying game over. And we'll also tell you who the winner of the game is. So we're going to say winner is, and we'll script the UI to actually do some stuff. Um, but yeah, center this by doing anchor center. I want to set the alignment to 0.5.5. So just copy what I have here for the size settings and whatnot. And then we'll center the text as well by clicking justification center. So how do you display the actual winner of the game? Well, the winner, as you might remember, is stored in the game state. So we can just grab the game state and then get the winner that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the game state. We're going to cast it to our game state that we made. We're going to get the winner of the game state. We're going to get the winner's username, and you can do that by getting the player name. So on Steam, this is going to be their Steam username or whatever platform you're on. We're then going to do a to text. And then um, if you click on the text here, we're just going to type in a name for this. We'll call this the winner text. And check the box that says is variable. Compile, save. We're going to go back to the graph here, and we'll set the winner text to say the winner's name. But I'm going to do some formatting. So we'll do format text and we'll actually say game over. Winner is. And then you want to do curly braces and we're just going to say winner name. So you can just plug the winner's name in. Connect that up like so. And now we just have to show the UI when the game's over. This is super easy to do. Just drag out from on winner found. We're going to create a widget. We're going to create the game over widget and then simply just add it to the viewport because the game's now over. Compile, save. Now you'll see that if I shoot this guy and then I shoot this guy, you can see that the game over screen comes up and it displays my username because I won the game. Note that if a different client wins, you can see that the username will actually be different as well. What about a death screen to tell the player that the player's died? This is also very easy. Just go ahead and click on game over, hit control W to duplicate that, and we're just going to call this death screen. Note that the way that I'm doing the UI is really not optimal, but I just want this video to be nice and fast. So we're going to say, you have died GG. And then I'm just going to disconnect all this construct stuff. We don't need that anymore. So you have died GG. And if we open up first person character, go to functions, there is the show death screen event that I made before, you might remember. And so we're literally just going to do the exact same thing, except this time we're going to show the death screen. Compile, save. And now if you get killed, you can see it says you have died GG. Now in a proper game, you would add a button to take them back to the main menu and all this stuff, but obviously we're a little bit stretched for time. So yeah, I'm doing a very simple implementation. But there you have it. There's the entire Battle Royale game. I have no idea how long I've been recording for. It doesn't feel like it's been too long. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, any questions, leave a comment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.